Hi, today we've got some new PCBs from PCBWay. Let's have a look inside the box. And we've got a pen, a sticker, and then we've got the PCBs. And these will look fairly familiar. These are some more LED boards, but they have a slight difference compared to what we've seen previously. So let's open this up and have a closer look at the boards. So many of you requested these and what we've got here are some metal clad PCBs. So these are aluminium PCBs that may end up giving us better thermal performance on our Cree LEDs. So here we go. We've got them panelized by PCBWay this time. So rather than handing them the panel files, I just sent the individual board because there were a few changes to make on there. And then I used the tool on the website. So when you go to the online quote tool, you can select panel by PCB way if you only want to upload a single PCB file. And then you type in here all of your requirements. So I asked for a three by three panel, giving nine PCBs for each panel. And then it gives you the option for how you break away those boards. So you can have it however PCB way prefer, which is normally whichever suits their process that they're running on that particular board. Or you can have V scoring only. You can do it as a tab, which is very similar to the design that I had previously, where there's little bits of PCB holding the inner boards to the panel. Or you can have a combination of both V-scoring and tab routing. And you would want at least V-scoring on a metal clad PCB uh, and possibly V-scoring and tab routing so that you can actually physically break away the metal clad PCB. And what we did on this design is use the V-scoring route. So we should be able to wiggle these panels away and that will leave us with the individual PCBs. I did leave it with the tabs on the side as well. And that may be useful if you're using a stencil. If you have a particular tool that requires this, basically the tool can put the little pegs through those holes to hold the PCB in place. Then you put your stencil on top and it all gets held in place and use the squeegee to apply the paste. I don't have that, um, but it's still useful to have those tabs there to help with handling a little bit. So we've got a standard 1.6 millimeter thickness aluminium board. The bottom side is completely unfinished. You can see it's V-scored on both sides so that you've got a chance of actually breaking these aluminium PCBs away from the panel. And I did try to etch my own aluminium PCBs many years ago and I had quite a lot of trouble with it. It goes through the standard process of etching the PCBs but what I kept finding is that the bottom kept getting attacked by the etchant. It does normally come with a film on the bottom and I believe they still use this process at PCB way, but I seem to have trouble stopping it from eating in from the edge and then it sort of seeped in onto the material underneath. They don't seem to have had this trouble. It does look like they've got very good results here. So obviously the process is a lot more refined than my homemade attempts. So just a closer look at the details. So on these aluminium PCBs, I've gone for the immersion gold finish and that gives a much more solderable surface even many years down the line. It doesn't oxidize in the same way that some of the other surfaces do. And we've got the black finish on the PCB with the white silkscreen. So I've gone ahead and ordered some more of these Cree LEDs. And the main reason that I actually got these PCBs made is because I had a lot of comments saying, why are you using FR4 material on these really high power LEDs? when aluminium PCBs or copper PCBs are going to have clearly much better performance than the FR4 boards. Now, the reason I went with the FR4 material is actually because I remember reading a lot of app notes from LumiLEDs a couple of years ago explaining the advantages and disadvantages of using different types of PCB material for their super high flux LEDs. And in the one that I particularly remember reading, it did say that they don't think that there's much to be gained from using an aluminium PCB compared to a properly designed FR4 board where you've got the copper vias conducting heat directly from the heatsink pad that is attached to the back of the LED and out to your heatsink because those copper vias have excellent thermal conductivity and basically when you've got the LED soldered to those and then your heatsink placed on the back you should get very good thermal conductivity all the way through. So I'm really interested today to see whether the added expense of having aluminium PCBs makes any difference whatsoever. Now clearly, with a mass of aluminium on the back of the PCB, it's going to take longer for the PCB and the LED to reach its steady state temperature. 
But is the steady state temperature going to be any different between this and one of the standard FR4 PCBs? So I'm going to solder up one of these boards now and then hopefully we can get a thermal couple right on the LED on both this board and the FR4 board. We're going to have a heat sink exactly the same so that it, we're comparing like for like and see what the actual performance difference is. So I'm just going to solder up one of these for now and you can see how straightforward it is to separate these PCBs. So we can use the Yoyu 946C hot plate today because there's no vias on these PCBs for any solder to wick down onto the bottom surface. So I've just set the plate to 180 degrees. We're using the bismuth solder again from Solder King. So that should quite nicely reflow this LED. So I'm just starting to see a few wisps of smoke and the temperature is pretty much there. I can see a few balls of solder so it may well have just reflowed in that instant where we started to see some smoke coming off. So I'll leave it for a few more seconds and then let the plate cool down probably with a fan across it to help with the cooling. So I've hooked up the two LEDs in series. They're connected to the bench power supply and they're just on at about 10 milliamps at the moment. Interestingly, there is a very slight temperature difference between the two LEDs. Those thermocouples are pressing right up against the LED heat sink pad as far as possible. And I swapped the meters around, swapped the thermocouples around and still got the same temperature difference. So at these very low currents, it seems that we're able to get a little bit more thermal dissipation through to the heat sink because there is a thermal via right where that thermocouple probe is sitting. But now what we're going to do is increase the current right up to 1 amp and we should see these temperatures starting to climb quite rapidly. So I'll turn it up to 1 amp now. So you can see the PCB with, on the FR4 material is climbing more quickly. We're at 48 degrees already and the metal clad PCB tailing behind at 43, 44 degrees C, which is what we expect. That aluminium PCB has more thermal mass, so it's going to take longer for that to heat up, and consequently the LED is going to stay cooler for longer. However, it's not lagging behind by a huge amount. We currently see it's about 7 or 8 degrees at the moment difference, and it'll be interesting to see whether the steady state temperature is the same. I would expect that the metal clad PCB will be very slightly lower just because the PCB itself is going to be providing some heat sinking to ambient but it'll be interesting to see what the actual difference is once it's reached steady state. So this has been running for 10 minutes now and these temperatures are pretty much stabilized. They do fluctuate every so often just by a little bit presumably from me just moving around slightly and causing a little bit of airflow but it seems like the FR4 material is just resulting in the LED heatsink pad being about half a degree warmer than the one on the aluminium PCB. So we've now got the thermocouples on the heatsink on the same heatsink fin and in approximately the same location but opposite sides and quite interestingly we're reading almost exactly the same temperature on both thermocouples. So that suggests that the slight reduction in temperature of the LED die is purely down to the extra thermal conductivity between the PCB itself and the air. So the heat sink is pretty much doing the same job and then we're just getting a little bit of extra cooling from that PCB, but very little difference really. And I did quite a bit of research when I was designing this PCB on the left. I dug up some of my old notes that I'd made previously and it does look like what LumiLeds were suggesting is true. So the position of those thermal vias, so long as you've got them all the way underneath the heatsink pad and then a few just around it where the gradient starts to change for the thermal profile, then you're going to extract almost as much heat as you can from the LED itself and be able to conduct that into your heatsink. So I think that's really quite an interesting result. It certainly clears up a lot of questions that I had in my mind when I was designing these PCBs I was questioning whether we should just try and go for the aluminium board or maybe even the copper backed board as opposed to the FR4 material. But I've always had in the back of my mind when designing these types of PCBs that paper that I read from LumiLeds and I think they'd done some FEA 
on various PCB materials to do the thermal, uh, thermal analysis of the PCB with a LED on there. And I do recall that they were suggesting about FR4 material being absolutely adequate so long as you design those thermal wires so that that copper is conducting the heat directly from the heat sink pad on the LED through to a copper plane or whatever you're attaching your heat sink to. And that certainly seems to be the case. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't applications where an aluminium PCB are preferable. So certainly if your PCB is going to be more densely populated, it may be that you can't have those thermal wires on there, or it may be more cost effective if there's a whole cluster of LEDs to use an aluminium PCB as opposed to dealing with all those wires. But I think this has been very interesting, and a big thank you to PCBWay for supplying these PCBs for this test, and certainly it, the difference between the two does mean that these are suitable for the ring light as well. So I may well install some of these in one of the future designs. So don't forget to visit PCBWay if you are thinking about getting some PCBs made, especially some of these higher tech PCBs. They also make the copper backed PCBs if you need those for your application. But I hope you found the video interesting and until next time, thanks for watching.